Esoteric Dave asked me a question about faith since I use the Bible all the time for my work, the interpretation that I'm doing. And so I want to talk about that in this video. My name is Dan Paulson. Welcome to the video. Let's just read that comment real quick and then I'll, I'll get into it. His comment was on a video I put up recently on uh, engaging with the higher self, staying engaged with the higher self, a lesson that I pulled out of Genesis that I've just kind of stumbled upon some things in there. As I'm going through and picking it apart, I'm learning more. And uh, so he said that he's been over the past uh, several years practicing living through the higher awareness, which is what we really need to do. That's what the material teaches us to do, to try and live through the higher awareness and not through the memories and then to resolve memories. Uh, but then he went on to say, I'm wondering though, since you frequently use the Bible as your material in your videos, where does faith fit in with all of this? Have we all misunderstood what faith is? Okay, I'm going to just stop right there. We, uh, I don't think we have misunderstood it, but I got something different going on, and that's what makes it weird. And using the Bible is a, yeah, that's a strange place to be doing this stuff. <laughs> There's, I'm in no man's land. I, I know that. If you'd have asked me a couple of years ago what I'd be doing today, I would never, ever, ever have thought I'd be doing a deep dive into Genesis and Abrahamic work. However, I have discovered the numbering system in there, the analog numbering system, which is the, it's a tattletale. It tells you exactly what's going on in there. So, um, okay, so here's what I want to say. Let's just take Genesis as an example. The entire Bible fits this category. First of all, I believe that it is 100% metaphorical. 100%. It needs to be that way. Even if there are any historical elements in there that are true, they just grabbed them from their day and put them in the story. However, and this is the tricky part, they did so purposefully. If it's time to destroy a city, it's because it's time to destroy an earlier self. Um, if it's time to have repeated pain in childbirth, that's holding the element of cyclical pain. So you can't just dismiss it out of hand and say it's baloney. You have to look at it and go, they're doing something. The seed that grows to a plant that gives more seeds that grow more plants within it is cause and effect. You begin to see common patterns in there that are held in the verbiage that is very purposeful. But as you go from place to place, you will see it being held in, in other types of verbiage, other kinds of cyclical pain. The boulder rolled up and down in Greek myth. It can never get it resolved. Liver becoming eaten out. Phineas's food getting defiled daily. Plagues in Egypt. All of those are cyclical pain elements in the stories. They're doing something at a core level off of the template. What is that right there? Don't let that slip by. Yeah, you're on your own when you start doing that. Um, Christians do not interpret that way. Faith, okay, so here's the deal. There's two ways to, to read the material, to engage with the material, two ways to engage with it. You can be a practitioner of the belief itself. That means you take the surface teaching and you live that way. That is something that requires faith because it's going to require supernatural. I am never going to go there because I've never in my life believed anything supernatural. As a kid, I always thought to myself, even, you know what, if God, how can you say supernatural? If they're, if they're real, aren't they natural? They would be, they, you're telling me they're real, but they're supernatural. How can, I, that never made sense. Supernatural to me was something that was not real. And so I thought that if God and angels and all that were there, they would be natural. So you just, I've always had this idea that I will never use supernatural as an explanation. But it, 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 that to me was like a, a cop out in my own mind. It's saying, I don't know. I'm just going to, I feel good saying this. So I'm going to say this and I won't do that. So um, when you turn the material inward though, it's on that human life template, which means it, it goes from outward looking in any way you want to many roads looking outward, one way leading inward. There's only one way to do it. There's only one thing to do, and it becomes a completely mental process then. And then everything in here, the, the faith goes away. There's no faith in anything anymore. What you're doing is you're interacting with the material to affect the healing. You're now interacting with the higher awareness. You're interacting with the memories. You're doing effective healing. You're observing life course. You're making changes along the way. You hit a stumbling block. You stop and go, get to the higher self. Here's another one. I got to get past my ego. I'm screwing up again. And you're with somebody that's going, yeah, you're screwed up. And you have to be able to ride that and go, yes, I am. Despite the fact that it's mutual, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You got to heal. You got to let that stuff go. It takes a lot of work to get through this. When you start interpreting the material like that, it becomes like that. You can't, there's no faith in that. What there is, is just, um, functional work. When you interact with the material and say, you know what? I, I had this pain happen to me in my childhood and I've got shame and it hurts me so bad. But if I do this healing process, guess what? Oh, the pain doesn't hurt anymore and it doesn't hurt my life anymore. 
That's bingo. That's what I'm doing right there. I don't need anybody to tell me to have faith in anything and wait till I die. There's something for here now, but not many people are going to do it. So that's how I get with faith. Faith is a necessary component in, in humanity though. However, I think that faith in the, in a, in a bigger picture, if you were to step back and look at faith in the long run, I don't think faith is going to be the best thing for human longevity. It might be better for humans feelings at the time. But faith provides, uh, Abrahamic provides certain things like we evolved on this planet and we're on a terrarium that has a limited lifespan. And people that are Abrahamics, I don't think they will agree to that. We didn't evolve and this planet's temporary anyway. We, that's going to be a problem. Um, that is long-term problem right there. It might help comfort people now, but it's not going to comfort the future when they go, what the hell did our ancestors do? How come they didn't do that? <laughs> they filled the ocean with plastic and nylon. Yeah. Um, so uh, I guess those are my thoughts on faith. I don't have, what I do, I try to practice, um, you know, I'm like anybody. You don't want to die. You want to live. We, we operate with, I, I want to be happy and I don't want to be uh, under stress or feeling fearful or anything like that. I want to be comfortable. And I want to be happy. So we're all, that's a part of being living creatures. <laughs> you know, I, I think you'd be hard pressed to find any animal out there that operated in any other way. They just want to eat, survive and not be eaten. Core, that's it right there. <laughs> but we get very complicated and we don't think about that anymore. Um, I, where am I? I'm all over the place with this. I, I think that there's a point in time where you just have to understand there's a bigger picture, but that it's not going to happen in humanity, which then sucks because you see that and you go, yeah, the people are evolving. This is going to happen. We're overdoing it. The left and the right in America are so extreme. It's like, oh my God, this is just, yep. It's, it's going to hit that point. It's very close to it now. And there isn't reason really involved in it anymore. It's, it's really just kind of more hatred and denial of reality than anything else. It's, it's, uh, so what's going to happen? Yep. It's going to hit the fan. There's no way that it won't. Uh, it's just a matter of how bad it's going to be, but you look in history and go, that's what happens. That is what happens. This will be no different. It's just a matter of not wanting to see it or not. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to look at it. I don't want to see it, but you look at it and go, things are getting crazy. Pe people are just coming uncorked. They're just losing it all over the place, doing the most horrific things. Yeah, we got problems, real big problems. So I think when it comes to faith, it's a very personal thing. I mean, I've, I've had people, it, it's a very difficult word um, because I have, that, that's one of the things that people will hit you with if you don't believe in what they believe in. And they just start accusing you of not having faith. And you're like, of course not. And you know what? That person will not put themselves in my shoes. They won't know, you know, what I was like, what my life was like as a kid when I did have faith. And I, and I prayed my heart and soul out for, for help and didn't get any and the things that happened instead. So, um, yeah, people don't get in your shoes. They don't know where you're coming from. And so what happens here is we just have massive different kind of brain types that evolved. And there's, there's a balance there that we can't offset. We are the ones that need to know what's right. They are not. They're the ones that need to feel good. We got a big group down here. It's important to feel good. And anything that makes us not feel good, you lash out against. Our job is not that. Our job is to be, I need to know what is friend or foe in reality. I need to make better decisions than that. I'm on the outside. I'm here to protect you. So I need to have a larger awareness. And you're stuck there with that. And they don't know that. And there's more of them than you. And there's not a damn thing you can do about that. That's the way humans, humans evolved. You know, I imagine in the days of Aristotle, Plato, all of that, that they would have, you know, their schools were, you know, bringing all the great thinkers together, but this was emerging from there as well. Aristotle and, and the Nicomachean ethics goes through this whole big story to get to the greatest good that people are looking for. What is it that really is the greatest good in life? That when you find that, you don't seek anything else. Happiness. When you're happy, you don't stop and wonder why. You might do a lot of things to be happy, but when you're happy, you don't stop and try to figure that out. You're just happy. Um, there you have it. The kingdom of heaven within. <laughs> Nirvana. Okay, non-religious. Um, the city of Atlantis. Three layers right there, right? 
Plato's going to be teaching us the trilogy without religion as well. The, the, the higher awareness, the consciousness, and then the memories as, as well. What happens? A corruption occurs. It sinks to the bottom of the sea. There's a flood story right there with one exception. It didn't come back. I don't know if he didn't finish his story or he just said, yep, corruption it went. Probably isn't coming back. Maybe he was saying something prophetic right there. I think that we would have been in schools like that. But what, what happens now? We're stuck here on the internet trying to make videos in public. Reaching out, can't find each other. <laughs> We're isolated. Um, anyway, okay, I, I went all over the place. I, I know you just asked about faith, and that's what I think. Um, I don't have any religious faith in anything supernatural. What I have is direct experiential I just changed its whole... I, actually, I've got something different to say than what I had there. I chopped off a piece. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and invoke uh, kind of modern quantum physics. And what what we know, what we can understand is that in the teaching, like in Taoism, it's teaching us that we're going to be flowing in the Tao based on the nature of what we're holding in our mind. Buddha is going to be teaching the same thing by telling us that w all that we are is... Um, based on our thoughts, founded on them, and that pain is going to continue to follow us as long as we've got something derogatory upstairs, or um, we will be bathed in happiness if everything is pure upstairs. Jesus is going to teach us right off the bat that it's going to be um, the poor in spirit are the ones that are going to find the kingdom of God. Okay, so as we start unlocking all of these, what we realize is they're talking about a mind state, and that not only that, but based on the nature of the mind state, your life flows that way. So what I have done is in interacting with the material, resolved past issues, childhood, hurt, things like that, that I realized I was holding and how I was and how I had to get outside of them and rise above. It was a big process. It really was. But in the nature of doing this, I'm following really what the material is doing. It's showing us how to utilize the higher awareness, which is outside the emotions and the consciousness mixed with the memories, which are emotionally charged. You can't just bring the emotions of the memories up by themselves. You, you won't like it. You have to understand what's going on and bring them both together so that you can manage. You can be right here looking at them from the higher awareness really is what you're doing. You're using the higher awareness to look at the memories. That's all it is. It's that simple because it's hard and it's fearful. We don't want to do it. So knowing this, knowing that we have this capacity, then we can start utilizing it. And that's what I did. And so what I, and, and in, in the process, it changed my life and changed life conditions along the way as well. Many times it's been stages to get here. So I can look at the material and say, I don't need faith in anything there. That if I interact with it mentally in this way, that somehow the manner in which I hold things in my mind emotionally creates a flow in life that changes. It improves. It goes, it, it leaves one thing behind and goes to another place. So that's a part of the material that is very interactive. Faith not required. You just have to look and see results. If you're not getting results, it's not. Um, it really comes down to the forgiveness, the, the, the changing the perception of the memory. Then the memory is, what do you see? The me whatever it is, is the, the bad element is trapped away. It, it is no longer able to hurt you. It's still there. It's not killed. You know what? If you've been watching the Babylonian and Jewish comparisons lately, I'll tell you what it is. It's changing the tablet of fate. It is taking your early belief system and changing it with a new one. So it's not just a matter of healing. It's a matter of the way you believe and the way you think life. It's, we've got issues, but do we have confidence too? Do we feel good about ourselves? Um, often along with past issues, uh, many layers of issues that need to be resolved. I think we also have to understand that we are very much creatures of habit. I know I am. I will habituate. So if I try to stop doing something without replacing it with something positive, oh, no, it doesn't work very well. You almost have to shift from one thing to another. It's like I'm going to be habitually doing something and habitually sitting and doing nothing day to day by day, by day. And that's fine when you need it for a little bit, but you're not going to continue that on. At some point you're going to get bored and go, I'm going to go, I'm going to go live some life. You know? 
that's what we want to do. So um, we're creatures of habit and we have to know that. It's not just a matter of ridding old ones, but it's replacing them with positive new ones. You could be more personal and more specific, like, boy, I'm drinking every night and I need to quit, but every night I drink anyway. What do I do instead? So you, you get some good books and go to bed and get a good light and read in bed instead or something like that. My apologies for paraphrasing this one. I hope I don't butcher it too bad. Somewhere it seems like it's in the Gospel of Thomas that if you know that the strong man is coming to destroy your house, that you practice first. And when the strong man comes, you defeat the strong man. That's it right there. You know you've got an issue coming up. I keep, I, I get triggered on this thing, damn it, and I get caught into it. I need the way out. I need a way out. What do I do? You practice. You're doing that right now. Create an alternative. You know it's going to come up. You're going to get caught into a single path. Start now and create an alternate path out. Oh, I'm getting triggered. Doom. I'm going to do this. I already have this plan. I'm leaving the area and I'm going to go straight here. I'm not going to get caught up in doing anything back and forth or whatnot. Create yourself alternative behaviors. You know the strong man's coming. Practice. Get ready. It's all there. You could look at something like that on a larger community scale and see the impact of it too. If you have you know, a b bunch of street kids or something like that that are into drugs and you want to get them off of drugs. How do you do that? You can't just get them off drugs. What are they going to do? You provide alternatives, you know, gyms or some sort of activities or alternatives that that would entice them into do, doing something that is positive because they're going to be doing something. So you, you provide yourself the same sort of care. Give yourself all opportunities. Go to the gym, get a bike, Go to the library, do something, something, pick up a study, take some classes, do, yeah, yeah, create an alternative behavior. And that is the tablet of fate, the agreements, the judgments with which we've judged others, and on and on, what we have named. So we have to look at all of those things, but I think, I think there's going to be, somewhere at the core, there's going to be some personality-driven things. We see... We see enough detail of that, of an isolation. Yeah. Um, okay, well, all right. So, faith, yeah, that's an odd one. With the Bible, if you are a Christian, you use faith. If you do, what I'm doing is so bizarre, it's just very strange, isn't it? It's very strange. I, I'm finding something in here that if you treat it with the right m mindset, it's totally, it, it's... It's revealing some things. It's hard to hook into because it's so foreign. It's different. But when I figure it out, it makes sense. It all fits. It all is that mental process that you have to do to get everything to, to go in the right place. And yeah, there's just some, uh, there's some detail in here that's pretty incredible with that numbering system that like I said, it's just, you, you can see something there that's like, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> But there's an interpretation that has to happen. You have to be able to read those things conceptually. You have to read those, you know, like all the, the cyclical pain things. You have to look at them and understand that, oh, they're all cyclical pain. When the plagues are happening, that's cyclical pain. What happens to Abram and Sarai that causes them to finally leave? Plagues hit Pharaoh, cyclical pain. So they leave the past. Yeah, they're, when you see them, when you see them like that, you'll be able to, uh, see what, it, what yeah you'll be able to see what's there in the meantime i don't know that higher awareness what is out there where do we come from that'd be the subject of a whole different video i don't make ones like that because that gets into the sit around the campfire and you know, uh past the libations get into the speculate wild ideas about you know where what could be but i tend to stay away from that stuff because it, it just goes into speculating you're trying to figure out maybe life but you, you don't have any evidence <laughs> um, i believe that the universe being 13.8 billion years ago is just that can't be it's too small and too recent it seems to me like it would be part of this ongoing massive forever churning roiling, bubbling, you know, kind of stuff that's going on or expanding, you know, like bubbles in a sink as hot water is hitting them, growing and expanding and popping finally, things like that. I see something more like that happening than, you know, but what are we doing there? Stretching, thinking, yeah.
campfire chats. <laughs> now, this next part is going to be a little philosophical. You have to be willing to question the mind of God. So from a faith-based perspective, you believe in God. But then if you, if you talk to the person that is believing in God, what are they doing? Are they simply believing in God and worshiping God and not following anything? I would look at the behavior of many people who are doing that and think that they're not following material. And if I was God, what would my interest be? Is there something outside of the universe somehow that is way beyond where we're just some little recent bubble? Maybe something's watching us. I don't know. This gets out there. You see it just, yeah. So you would think that if there is a way to get there, what would the, the best way be? It would be, to me, it would be purity. I cannot imagine the mind of a God who says, you know what? I'm going to create you down there on planet earth. And those of you who worship me are the ones worthy. I, I would not think that that would be a viable God or a worthy behavior. I think that would be a very fearful behavior. I think a God worthy of their salt would say, I don't care if you believe in me or not. I don't care. I just want to see what kind of person you are. What are you on your what are you like on your own? What are you when you're not in fear? And when I do that, I realize I'm not going to have faith in the God of Abraham. But that doesn't mean that I don't believe something's there and if there is a God, then I if if there is a God out there that is bigger than the God of everything, what something, something, then I think that that God's interest would not be that I worship it, but that I try to just you know, be the purest person I could be. I would also reason this, that if, if I had a God or if there was a God there that said, the only people who believe in me and worship me are going to be worthy of heaven. Everybody else are sinners and they're going to be in hell, whatever. Then you look around the world and you find some place where people are not Abrahamics. They live somewhere else and they have orphanages and they're caring for one another and they're loving one another. They're taking care of people. They're doing just wonderful things. Are they going to die for being sinners? There's a point where you look at that and go, I think that that's very unreasonable. My values are not that way. So I would not follow a God that required me to believe that or to think that. I don't think that those are uh, good values. Faith, yeah. Um, those are my thoughts on it. I don't have faith in supernatural at all, none whatsoever. I do have faith that if I make changes up here, that it changes my flow in life. And that that has to do with some sort of the way we interact with each other through a sixth sense, which would be the, the central nervous system, but we're not very aware of it. That a lot of times that we have feelings, if you stop and start playing with this and go, I feel a funny way. You look around and go, I'm, th these are not my feelings. I'm picking up, I'm, I'm feeling nervous because, or impatient because I'm with people over here that are really impatient and are, you know, doing all kinds of, it's like, oh, I'm, yeah, I'm not impatient actually. You can quickly disconnect from that. We get caught up in the fields of rejoicing or of protest or of things like that, the good fields, the bad fields. We can see that those fields are there and that we're functioning when they're really elevated. We can, we can sense them. When they're not elevated, I think we're just, I think we're a lot of times we're having kind of group feelings sometimes. We get caught in our own situations. We turn off from that. But when you're out on your own someplace in, in crowds or something like that and you're not paying attention, I think oftentimes we might be sensing a crowd feeling without knowing it. Could it be? Yeah, I think it could. It would make sense. That's the way you would want that group to evolve. They, you want them feeling the same way. And when fear is felt by one, they better all feel it about the same damn time and react. That would be the safest thing for survival. Yeah, that we've got that sixth sense and it's right there. And it's just a sensation of uh, yeah, it's a, something crawling on your back, crawling up your spine, <laughs> something like that. It's a nervous feeling. All right. At some point you reason it through and you realize what people are looking for is happiness. And what is faith then? Faith is something that brings people happiness because it gives them a belief in something that, so what? It's, it's fine. I don't mind that. Um, I, I do mind people that have no cognition of the teaching using it as a, just a typical hate tool, you know, worshiping guns and hurting people with God. Yeah. That's just crazy. It, things have really gone <laughs> upside down <laughs> across the board all over. Got to find that middle path. 
there's a middle path and right now it's just how to stay disconnected from everybody that's just going ape <laughs> it's, it's like you can't disconnect from the feelings now it's i almost feel like a tension it's weird I should end this. I'm just rambling all over now. Dave, thanks. Yeah, I kind of took liberties here to go to a few different places. Faith is a big one, though, because I know what it's there for. And I'm, I mean, we all looking for something beyond. You're, you're trying to think through something that's reasonable. And to me, something that's reasonable is more universe and something beyond that's been here before us. That, you know, that we could be a part of a process or something like that. But at the same time, you realize, yeah, you might not. This might be it, but... You know, life is fun and it's an exploration, but the material right here is leading one direction that I'm, that, I mean, that's just what I'm doing. So is it the, is it the most fun thing? No, it sure isn't, but it is the path. It is. It's what's there. It's what the ancients were building their stories off of. Yeah, absolutely. That template right there. And, uh, even though it might not be the most fun and the most interesting, if interacted with, it is the most probably the most rapidly life-changing however it is emotionally draining you got to be around some help so dave yeah i appreciate the opportunity to just kind of yeah kind of do something a little bit different sometimes you know this this normally wouldn't make a good video probably just put something up like this just random blabberings but uh with a question like that it kind of opens up the opportunity to you know just say some kind of off subject sort of things a little bit that Go a little bit deeper than looking at the material. There's certainly more to it than the material. There's something out there that's not in the material. <laughs> so, although you get to it through this direction. All right. Take care.